Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Atya. We speak about PhD, mindset, everything under the sun and life. So every research scholar at some point of time in their PhD will decide or will start thinking on what to do next after PhD. And sometimes some students ask me whether it is safe to start searching for a job during PhD, what are the career options afterwards, what you can do later, and all these questions will be answered in today's video. Today I'm going to tell you several career options that you can choose after your PhD. And this is based on the assumption that you are going to utilize your PhD knowledge into this. I also know that there are a lot of offbeat career options. Like just because you have done PhD does not mean you have to get into research or academia. These are the two most common options that are there. You can go beyond that. And I'll make a separate video about those offbeat career options somewhere later, maybe next month or so. Today's video would be all the career options that you are going to choose, assuming that you are utilizing your PhD knowledge for this. So are we set? Let's begin. So what I'm showing you here are all the positions that we are going to discuss. We have postdocs, SRF, research associate, and all of that. What is the exact meaning of this? How to get into this? And the first position that I would like to say about is a postdoc. Postdoc is a temporary position. It's not a full-time. It cannot be a full-time. It's like an extension. You finish PhD and then it's like another course. It's for two to four years. So depending on how you finish, most of the postdocs I see in my lab also, they have finished in two years. It's a temporary position. As I said, it has a greater degree of independence as compared to your PhD. In PhD, it's like you have to grind, you have to go after it. And postdoc is more of an administrative position. You will be doing your work, wet lab work if it is there, or dry lab work. You will have more autonomy. So this is one of the things that you can apply for. And there are several fellowships. There is Fulbright Fellowship. Then there are several other central government postdoctoral fellowships also. I'll do a video on them on some other day. If, say, suppose you are looking for a job and you are finding trouble finding it then meanwhile in that time you can apply for postdoc and you will get fellowship from 50,000 onwards okay secondly one point I would like to say that many of the institutes okay especially the top tier institutes they ask for a postdoc because PhD now every other person does so they kind of want a postdoc if it's abroad then it's better but even if it is in India that is something that you might want to consider like in bits the compulsory thing is you have to do a postdoc to get a teaching position just PhD is not sufficient the second career option is senior research fellow SRF usually say suppose you have UGC fellowship the first two years would be JRF, the next three years would be SRF. That is there. But sometimes what happens, even after PhD, some institutes, some universities advertise for a senior research fellow position. So I am talking about that position, not your in-house fellowship or not your fellowship ka, uh, SRF. There is a scheme by CSIR also, direct SRF. So I will give a detail about that in some other video. If it's SRF, then you can apply for it. The salary is pretty good. It's above 40, 45,000. Mostly your job would be to manage a particular project. So SRFs are usually recruited for a particular project. Your job would be conducting literature review, conducting research and analysis of comprehensive literature, having an updated knowledge about what is the research that is going on in that field, in the project that you have selected, and what would be the outcome. So you will be like an in-charge, okay? Whether your PI, principal investigator, would be there or no, you will be the actual in-charge. In our country, president is there and prime minister is there. So president may represent the country, but prime minister is the one who ca actually carries out all the functions. So SRF is the one who actually carries out all the functions of that particular project. If there is any grant, then whatever submissions have to happen. 
whether it is literature review or grant proposal or anything that you are going to do related to that literature review that you will do then if you have to recruit any personnel for that project then you will be actively involved in that other research scholars which are there in the lab you will be mentoring them also preparing financial aspects of the project project is what project you can do only if you have money and allocating all the budget and finalizing how money will be spent if there are any publications which it will be if it's a project there will be publications so you are going to manage that the next position you can apply is for a research associate research associate is somebody who deals with a project just like srf but it's more of a project independent position like srf are usually recruited for a particular project a research associate is a position by itself so the project may come and go you will be there most of the times i've seen people confuse research associateship with post doctorate post doc is a temporary position okay research associate can be of longer duration and can be a permanent position post doc will never be a permanent position it's like getting work experience and most of the times what uh, research scholars do is if they are not getting job anywhere then meanwhile they apply for post doc okay so at least some income is there and they can add to their work experience some of the things that you are going to do is working independently to manage ongoing delivery of research projects then working with teams to get a better methodology and discussion with teams then performing research in projects and providing statistical and analytical support to research teams and across the directorate then whatever inputs you have you can contribute to that and as a research associate your input your opinion would be very valuable to the project then also you will be reviewing other reports other articles like whenever research scholars submit a paper a publication somebody reviews it and then gives their comments so you will be that reviewer you will be collaborating with the principal investigator to work on a particular project you will also be keeping yourself updated so if you technically see the functions of srf and research associate are pretty much the similar in the way that they will be administrating it whatever is the title whether it is post doc srf and research associateship that ultimately what your role would be that depends on that particular lab if it's wet lab work then your functions may be different if it's a dry lab work then your functions may be slightly different so it all depends on the kind of work that is going on and what are the thoughts of pi your principal investigator or the lab head now senior writer or technical writer or scientific writer so as the name itself suggest your job is to write write and in terms of phd in terms of research how are you going to convey the findings which are happening in your lab to the outside world now creating communication if you have to if there is something that is happening in your lab or if there is some work that is happening under your pi then how do you communicate it to the media that would be your job not just in terms of writing but also in terms of speaking so mainly the written communication will be the focus but if required you will also be asked to communicate if someone has written an article then reviewing that peer reviewing that also will come under your thing also finding out what styles are available like if you have to submit something into media their style and the their standard is that would be completely different than if you are giving some kind of advertisement in the newspaper that's also media but for a conference that would be different for newspaper thing that would be different so these differences you need to have and you need to keep your templates ready so that whenever some information comes then you can just put into that template and send it as a senior writer you will collaborate with different agencies and see how you all can come together this is also called as science communication in some fields if it's science then also called as communication writer so the names may be different but basically your job is to communicate and communication through writing communication through speaking and collaboration as a senior writer or scientific writer you will also be delegating whatever tasks which are there 
with respect to writing to other scholars or to other people. And the next thing you can apply is for research assistant and lab manager. And I'll tell you what is the difference. So research assistant or lab technician or lab assistant, these are usually, these are on the same level. If it's a technician, it would be for a particular instrument. For example, we have something called as fax fluorescence activated cell sorting and there is a technician which manages only that instrument he will not be involved in anything else so like if a research scholar wants a particular chemical or needs something to be prepared then you can help and give your expertise into that lab manager would be dealing with the financial aspects like we have a lab manager for our lab Whenever we require something, we send him a quote and he orders it for us. Lab assistant will assist a research scholar. Lab manager is more of an administrative position. He or she will work in collaboration with the principal investigator or the lab head who is there and see about how the financial aspects are carried out. Okay. One of the great options to do is to join an industry in that particular field. Okay, so say suppose you have done PhD in environment, like me, say suppose. There is some kind of treatment plant which is there, whose components some company is manufacturing. Then you can join that and give your valuable inputs. And companies pay you very well if you have done PhD. In fact, I have some people in BITS who are doing PhD just to get a promotion in their company careers. So if you already have a PhD, then your experience would be much valued. Nobody can deny that companies value PhD. And many of the times, the expertise which is required, which is provided, these things can be fulfilled only by a PhD. Of course, if somebody master's candidate is there and he does his own research and works on it, then he can give input. But PhDs are much trained in that particular subject in depth if you are applying for a job just make sure when an advert comes you inquire in hr about what are the requirements then you can carry forward with your application proper research on your end is required before applying for this and you need to go through your thesis very thoroughly because most of the times i have seen in these interviews post phd interviews you are asked questions based on your thesis. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments. Till the next time, bye.